Hi, I'm Amy Wolf with ViewCast. New research at Vanderbilt and Harvard finds hearing loss in young people is increasing at an alarming rate. The study compared hearing tests conducted on thousands of adolescents and teens as part of the third national health and nutrition examination. Test results came from the late 80s and early 90s and were compared with those from 2005 and 2006. As Carol Bartu tells us, the results carry an important message for parents and young people. Like most 20-somethings, Andrew Gaddis is excited about beginning his life and career. So I'm going to put some little earphones in your ears, and you're going to hear my voice and hear some beeping sounds, and I'm going to give you the button, so when you hear the beep, just push the button. But today, at the Vanderbilt Bill Wilkerson Center, Gaddis learned he has something most people don't experience until retirement. He told me that I have slight hearing loss in my left ear um, due to noise exposure. And he is not alone. Dr. Ron Evie, director of the center, co-led a new study in the Journal of the American Medical Association that shows a shocking number of young people, ages 12 to 19, have significant hearing loss. Previously it had been about 3% of the population. Now it's 5% of the population. So 1 in 20 adolescents, not old people, 1 in 20 adolescents is walking around with a hearing loss. Even more alarming, one in every five adolescents already show signs of a mild hearing loss. Well, this is the front end of an epidemic. Um, the question is, what is causing this? All right, can you hear me? Yes. All right, just repeat the word back to me. Okay. Sidewalk. Sidewalk. Baseball. Baseball. Gaddis says it was likely racing motocross since he was 12 that caused his hearing loss. Airplane. Airplane. Eardrum. Ice cream. Ice cream. But sounds from an MP3 player or concerts or events can all reach dangerously high noise levels. Dangerous, that is, for the delicate hair cells deep inside the inner ear that allow us to hear. The hair cells are in liquid, and when a sound comes along, it mechanically moves the hair cells, and then they send off an electrical signal. When the sound is too loud, and it's too prolonged, after a while the hair cells can't take it anymore and they start dying off. Gaddis says hearing loss definitely affects his life. You know, talking to people, especially when there's a lot of background noise and you have to constantly be asking, you know, somebody, what, what? It's, uh, it can get not only annoying for, for me, but I'm sure for the person that I'm trying to talk to. The concern is young people are not aware the danger is real. Some listening devices are designed to reach levels as high as 120 decibels, well beyond the safe limit of 85. Listening devices should be set so they cannot be turned all the way up, and parents should begin to warn children, even in grade school, to use ear protection if sound becomes uncomfortably loud, and that ringing and temporary hearing loss is not normal or harmless. Loud sound is injurious to hearing, and it's cumulative and it's permanent. We're going to move on to the next part of the test. You'll hear some beeping sounds, and when you hear the beep, just push the button, even if it's very soft. After hearing his test results today, Andrew Gaddis says he will warn his friends and family. Hearing protection might be a, a good idea. Um, maybe let my brother know not to listen to his iPod so loud or his music so loud in his car, for sure. Once it's gone, it's, it's gone. <laughs> For ViewCast, I'm Carol Bartu. Dr. Evie says the significant increase in hearing loss among young people is especially alarming because some vaccines we now give in early childhood prevent illnesses that cause hearing loss. By now, scientists were hoping to see a decline in hearing loss. For ViewCast, I'm Amy Wolfe.